uh, welcome Jose. Well, we come from Bagaboyo, a satellite city from Guayaquil in the country of Ecuador. It's a flyover city, right? A transit city. They are marginalized cities that are marginalized from the big metropolis. They are cities in the outskirts, cities that work based on a certain order, which is always based on public policies, and we see many deficiencies. This city has grown from the empirical foundations, from workers, construction workers, understanding our territory, understanding our floating economies, our circular economies. So we understand architecture based on transgression. That is to say, how do we use the pavement to extend the public territory and to be able to use it? So the idea is to see how these peripheral areas get connected to the city in, I wouldn't say eloquent way, but rather to make it possible for certain areas to be unseen, to be fully covered, so the users or anyone visiting the cities won't be able to see them. So for us, it was very important to understand the construction technique that is being applied in empirical terms, to understand all the processes that these projects bring about, these projects that are born from a totally different reality compared to the realities in the metropolis. So for us, it is very important to understand the craftsmen, how they work, how they traditionally use building materials, the construction techniques. And we understood from the very beginning that architecture cannot be a craft without activism being involved. So our understanding was that we needed to create a space that would work, like, for example, an architectural studio, but also that it would be able to work as a house, as a residence. So I insist. For us, the idea is not only to welcome customers, but to continue, continuously experiment and explore with different materials. Why do we constantly build walls in a traditional way? Why can't we change the rules of the game? Why can't we find new words and new ways to intervene the cities from the interior? So we're not talking about politicians. Why can't architects start managing processes? Processes that will have houses going from private to public. So the office becomes an art gallery, a meeting point for many different photographers, illustrators. So as architects, we try to manage or to organize festivals connecting architecture with the arts. And then it is very important how we link architecture to a city where it is not really an architectural representation. So this is a, a way in which we can make them answer to a, an environment, a context, to a reality. Uh, we do these buildings full of glass and we do this more and more and they uh, use a lot of uh, light, a lot of power and there is a need to always use every space. This is what's not really okay and what's been done more and more in our cities. And look at this, this is the way we are doing it from architecture. You know, we are making cities that do not address a reality. So for us, it is important to give this example. This is a project that's called House Between Blocks. Then there was a need to debuild, deconstruct walls around the city. So this is a way in which a facade 
or the front of a home stops being a small window with a door and it just becomes a filter, a filter from the city. Uh, because of course, uh, on one hand, we have insecurity and unsafety and on the other part, we have a need from the user not to w lose that visibility, you know, uh, to be able to see the streets. And let's look at the architecture here. We saw blocks. We had blocks in order to be able to create this uh, sort of bricks. And we were asking ourselves, why should we do this as we always do? Let's do this differently so we can be inhabited. So with very little money, with very little resources, we are able to make this livable uh, and inhabitable. And of course, we wanted to experience all of these material essentials and architecture essentials. So we were able to see how natural light can be used and how this light helps us generate a new atmosphere with new materials and with new ways to display these materials and use these materials. So it is a way to understand how dynamics stop being static. They just start being more active they start uh, creating movement, as we can see here. So for us, it is very important to understand how we can use light as of a fragmentation of the front part. The front stops being just a full wall, and it's just what we can see here. The small projects help generating a city and they also help generating a critical thinking as of what we're doing with this architecture. This used to be a patio, a yard that was left unused. So we thought about maybe using it for production. So now the user doesn't only live here, but it becomes a productive house. It starts offering production that helps creating and giving revenue to the family. So a house that used to be private now is public. So this is the same thing we do with the equipment. What are we doing with urban equipment in Latin American cities that are small cities, actually? Well, virtually, we lease homes in order to be able to build a gym, for example. But in this land, we uh, faced the challenge. We needed to do a three-floor gym uh, for three years, uh, but this land was so straight, so narrow. So for us, it was very important to understand what was going to be the concept at the end of the day. We didn't want to work with glass. We didn't want to work with air conditioning. We wanted to work with uh, materials that were as sustainable as possible across uh, conditioning with pa uh, passive uh, uh, assets. So that was our idea. So this urban gym is generated with four floors, actually, but it is generated according to the needs, to what's needed, to what's required. So the architecture is no longer an element of walls in our fronts, which determine let's say this uh, isolation from people inside and the streets. So you start re rethinking the urban front and you start linking directly to the street. So it is like an obsession to us, you know, the way to link architecture with people, with the street and with the neighbors. So with the materials that come from the area itself, we are able to understand how light works, how wind works. And this allowed us to work with these double uh, ceilings and with this uh, linking uh, characteristic from horizon and from vertical aspects. And we were able to connect this to the city and to the outside. So it is important to see and go over all of the key points that determine how to address a project that can open and close according to the way the weather is doing. So it is very interesting to see what's going on right now in Latin America, since it is uh, really uh, uh, about rethinking uh, what we have at hand, what we can use. It is a basic need of what we can do from the very little we have here. Uh, and we can create a global architecture that thinks of our needs. How to use the covers that are always abandoned and how we can uh, recondition them so we can connect them to the city. 
So it is very important. Uh, it is very important the way we diversify urban centers. It's another project where we combine and we fuse home with productivity in a horizontal way. This is a young family that wanted to have their own work inside their homes. Uh, and we did a building of one floor and another floor. So we proposed. Why doing it like that? Why cannot we do it horizontally? So this is how we can use less room, you know, less scalability room, and we can work with our people, and we can see how we can use a material that has always been marginalized or left behind, for example, brick. Brick at our city has always been covered, has always been left that back way back so we were wondering why can't we use the beauty of this material maybe we can have a domestic scale where it is a home half of it and the other half could be local offices or maybe schools for production so this is the same sense that we used uh, the same idea that we use for the gym this is an architecture that thinks as of light of natural light but also a system that makes us uh, helps us know what to do with this light it is of utmost important to see this uh, connection between the project and the streets and how we can give the cities small green areas small spaces where within our political systems we do not really grow trees you know and we don't because of maintenance because there aren't enough resources but we can do it privately and make it public. So it is important to also discuss the technique, the structure, how this structure is connected with the light and with materials so we can generate an atmosphere, an environment. And that's what it is. It's just understanding how our architecture, this vernacular architecture works. It is a tall one, but we make it contemporary. We bring it to today's reality, how these areas can be inhabited from the community, from uh, children and from the city. So for us, this self-management uh, is very important to generate community projects. And this is, of course, bringing it from the border. So we came to this. It appears to be a dumpster, a landfill. This is inside an urban center inside the city. So along with other foundations, we connected and we related and we went to politicians and we asked, how can we manage projects, community projects, so we can do something with them? And they said, well, this is a solution. So we as architectures have to understand uh, that the easiest thing to do is not always a solution. So we said, no, this is not inhabitable. This is not uh, dignified for a family that works on recycling. So we started managing materials with private companies and with foundations. And we said, OK, the, uh, the first floor is going to be open and this house has to become in the second floor uh, by moving walls, by being flexible and by adapting to what is needed. It has to become a structure of what we had at hand, which was wood that was donated to us and we understood architecture not only as the habit of saying okay we're working for someone else well no i mean thinking about this as an urban production point a city production point so working with a community labor a police departments fire departments how with this, we were able to establish an entire collective organizations with our veterans that know about wood, with our people that want to help. And after that, then we have this common area. This is the result of understanding what is our process as a Latin American city, understanding what is our weather, what is an, an environment? Why providing this that allows to have a cross air conditioning, a natural light, a natural air that allows to uh, it allows it to be more horizontal, more uh, freer, m more energetic. That's what I call them. And with architecture, we can also create urban 
uh, areas, real estate elements that can move according to what the family wants to do with to grow. These are elements that we can understand. Architecture shouldn't be static. It should always be moving, changing, transforming, because human beings, we also always have the need to move. So it was great that our element also moves according to use. And at night, it starts generating some uh, some advertising from the architecture itself within this area, you know. This is actually fundamental to us because we it generates a reflection, you know. It reads here, recycles. So it asks us to see what we're doing for the world, you know, uh, from the window, Larry. So in order to conclude my presentation, we also visited this place and we understood that as a, a, a resources as a city is glass, for example, normally in Badamoyo, we have always uh, avoided risk in a not adequate way. There are floating homes, as you can see here. And every time we walk around there, we see that they are more and more deteriorated, but the government wants to take them out because they give a poor image to the society. So Don Teodoro, Mr. Teodoro is one of the features that has this floatability equipment in the river. And we as architectures, when working with management aspects and with collectivity, we were wondering what we could do with this. So we read this heritage, you know, we read the heritage architecturally speaking, and we said, okay, architecture has always been seen from land, you know, from, from land, from ground. So what happens when water is inhabited? And I think that to us, the first step was uh, something watery that just becomes a, a little bit more land. So we had to understand how this works. So from 100 years, they have been living like that. They have been floating. They have been looking for a way to make a living generating this equipment for fisheries, uh, fishery activity. And they work with the river towards the city to able to generate internal economies mainly. So we were thinking about a system and generating a systematization working from three bases. The first one was rehabilitating the equipment. The second one was working with toiletry systems, dry ones, you know, laboratory systems in order to see how to use organic waste in order not to pollute the river and also creating productive housing so these are processes that we that made us go into the water water work with them we work with the community uh, you see the owner at the right without a shirt and he's the main part of the construction so we understood that it was like a micro manifest you know like saying look at the city in front of us why are we marginalizing why are we not doing something and this is it, being able to work with the technique, being able to work with the structure, uh, giving a minimum impact, but of a large usefulness and of large need for those inhabiting it. So this is to us, uh, for us, this is uh, very important, you know, understanding the architecture from other points of views from other chores you know not what we were taught at college that it has to be for a specific client or for someone that just asks for a specific way because that's what they need we need to understand now what's needed so we need to think from management so we can able to so we are able to do great things and with this we can succeed so we can tell the young gen generations and young children that collectivity is a fundamental part of architecture. And with this, I would like to say goodbye. And hopefully we can understand and we can reflect as of other territories that there are, of course, options, that there are, of course, many possibilities to intervene. So a big hug goes out for all of you and hello from Ecuador and goodbye also from Ecuador.